the nature has achieved great results even without us human beings putting any effort into that. So later when we've got this intellectual part of the brain that has this ability to, to know the past, the present and the future, that kind of a time travel, it also started to pretend it, it's the key, it's the king, it's the driver, it's the, all the answers. And, and in that moment, that transition has gotten us into the delusion. And the more people are stuck with this mindset that intellect has everything, the less they are listening to their instincts, right? And therefore, I think the balance has been lost at that point. And the only biggest reminder is to get the balance right. It gets the balance between all of our capabilities and not to dismiss any of our inherent other knowledge that comes through instincts, that comes through our biology, that comes through our DNA. And that's why in my work I'm speaking about the transformation gene. We wouldn't be here if we wouldn't be observing our genes, wouldn't be evolving through all of these transformations. So therefore, if we want to find the root cause and the answer to all of the global challenges, it's enough to do exactly that, to look down to what is already encoded into our basic human nature without and taking away all of the distraction that we have overlaid like technology <laughs> distraction <laughs> different kind of media and so forth so therefore the the, the beginning and the end <laughs> and the question and the answer <laughs> is right here <laughs> in every single human being and this is just about training our awareness therefore also cities if we want to have a better answer what where is the balance between the rural and the urban it's the same where our nature is flourishing and that's the question goes to where our nature would be the most um beneficially getting what's best for it so there's always some sort of a balance and there is always possibility to find the answers within within ourselves and this is sometimes when i uh say to people especially those who go through crisis or they go through different challenging moments in their organizations, there comes the moment when the question arrives. Like people ask, oh, do I really love this job? <laughs> or people say, well, do I really want to keep playing at this within this ice hockey team? <laughs> Whether I'm really willing to write a book on this instead of that, and if these questions arrive, they come with an implied answer. <laughs> so why, why I'm saying this is because 10 years ago, and a question arrived to me. The question was, am I happy at the corporate job? <laughs> so, obviously, <laughs> so obviously, the answer was no, I wasn't fully fulfilled. There was something more in me signaling, saying, Agnes, there is much more than this. Of course, I was very well achieving i was delivering results i was one of the best at that time for that market and there was still possibility to expand markets projects uh, millions <laughs> and so forth but then the question was very straightforward are you are you are you feeling fulfilled on this journey and obviously the answer was no so this is where i started my academic journey this is when i went to go deep into the science to uncover what's really there what's really humane and what's really into technology that can be intertwined that can be combined in a way that would be bringing benefits for ourselves for a human mankind this is how artificial intelligence arrives to management to leadership to pretty much really brings in a big deal in organizational change and I'm really into that because once I've gotten through all of the technological advances so far that has helped organizations to change, has helped cities to change, the artificial intelligence comes in as this kind of, uh, with a huge expectation. At the same time, as long as we are not able to understand our own intelligence to the degree that we can explain to somebody how the neurons are wiring, at least we know the neuroplasticity is there, but still, 
where the consciousness <laughs> or the mental concepts about self emerge within the very physical and bi biochemical bioelectrical <laughs> impulses it's still a big question mark and therefore now we try to replicate into the neural networks which is great and we need to do that and uh, Neuralink is uh, even connecting and improving the data connection between the computer and the brain which is all fine that would be accelerating our studies and our research and science about the brain function the basic function of neurons but then I still believe we are the designers of our own ways to have the artificial intelligence in our lives. And this is a still a very long way from my perspective. I, I don't say that there should be many years, but I think that the way is long. It, that means a lot of energy <laughs> will be dedicated to that to get to the state where we will be having a balance again balance between our human ability to express our intelligence and then intertwine our intelligence or augment our intelligence with the help of uh, artificial intelligence and that would be hopefully in my lifetime <laughs>